Hi everyone. This is a new series uh, that's going to start up. You're going to see how it goes. It's called Teacher's Log. And I had something like this several years ago on the blog. There wasn't any videos made, but there was a blog made of my thoughts about teaching and using that week's or that day's enlivenments, inspirations, thoughts, wonderings, challenges that would come to me in the course of teaching. And I will give, trying to adjust the light a little bit, I give so much credit to the students obviously, because the student's art, one of the student's arts, is to be able to ask questions, or if they're not asking questions from their own enthusiasm or struggles, um, activate certain things in me. And I'm always amazed at this point in time. Um, and actually, in other ways, I'm not amazed, but I'm very grateful for it, that different kinds of knowledge will come to me, even if I've seen situations before many times similar to the ones that I'm presently dealing with. Each person brings a uniqueness that activate something in me that's a little bit different than someone else asking a similar question. There's a whole mystery and extraordinary thing about that. So thank you students and uh, this was a particular potent day. Well, every day can be for me for teaching and um, but I want to look at a, something that happened today and then make another video of what happened today as well um, on another subject. So this one subject that I'm going to start with in this teacher's log um, is ask the question, what is fullness of sound? Or what is a full sound? And that'll be the name of this video. What is a full sound? Video one. Now you might think, what kind of an obvious question is that? What is a full sound? It might not be as obvious as you think. Um, but with this one person um, who said I could use their name and other people said I could use their name but I'm rethinking that. Um, I might not. Um, just because I don't want it to get personal for them even though it is. Uh, so I want to leave it a little broader, and perhaps at certain points I will list students' names thanking them for their inquiries, their genuine interests, their spending, choosing to spend some time with me in helping assist them on their journey. So, what is a full sound? And with this person, he was bringing up the idea, he felt like he was overblowing some things. We were working on trying to 
get more of a three-dimensional impact with this sound. A very focused, clear, warm sound. I'm just trying to add a little more dimensionality this way. Because sound has dimension. Sound has texture. Sound different densities, different kinds of overtones, and we all put words to them. And then that word beautiful comes up, and we think of certain things about what's a beautiful sound. Um, what's not a good sound. All this thing. All these types of things. So, we also speak about a full sound. What is a full sound? Now, you can think about some of the brass players or instrumentalists that you hear, you go, wow, what a full sound. Does full have to do with size? Is it a dimension? Is it satisfying? Think of full sound. I just had a full plate of food. Have you noticed that sometimes you can have a full bowl or a full plate of food and not be filled up? Well, the reason for that is the food that you were having wasn't what's called or referred to as nutrient dense. The combinations of fat, carbohydrates, and proteins didn't mix in such a way in their balances and quality that would actually put together a vitamin-rich, nutrient-rich vitamins, and light up all the lights of satisfaction. So nutrient-dense, we can feel full in a fulfilled way when we have that kind of food. Now you can feel full, <laughs> not fulfilled, by you know, taking a bag of potato chips and just shoving it in there. That's called empty calories. So I've heard sounds that have been very, well, full, um, but I wouldn't call them nutrient-dense. And they can be very large in their diameter and still feel a bit hollow in terms of the nutrient density of the sound. Something doesn't feel fulfilled when listening to it. <clears throat> so this particular player, we were talking about getting more of the surround sound aspect, which is an aspect of sound, but he said, I feel like I'm overblowing. So then we said, okay, right, and I added three qualities so he could play. He said, cut the dynamic back a little bit. And think of three words. Warm. Now, I, I keep forgetting the third word. And I did when we were talking about it. That's too bad. <laughs> I wonder why. Um, but I gave him three words. Two of them. <laughs> Was warm. Oh, warm beautiful and resonant. 
and I wanted to see what that would do. And it did kind of what I thought it was going to do. The sound got more compact. And what that compactness did was take the very various elements of the sound and put them closer together. So the circumference, the diameter, and the circumference were a bit smaller this way, but it was much fuller in terms of fulfilling, or filling, rather, the space. So the whole feeling of him overblowing was, okay, he was going beyond the point of his embouchure vibration in relationship to the amount of air coming through the horn. Those two things were creating a circumstance of going past the point of efficiency, of efficient, cohesive vibration. Therefore, there weren't as many overtones happening, even though the circumference seemed to be getting bigger. And this is where you have the beach ball analogy with the softball, with the baseball. We all know beach ball, big circumference, but no way is it going to go as far as a softball which is more compact, more filled in in its space, and what's filling in the space, or baseball, which is much more compact. And you can see this throughout creation, right? I've heard, you know, it's said about certain, the smaller planets might have a greater actual density inside themselves compared to one of the gas giants, which would be you know, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, and Neptune, compared to like the Earth and Mars, for example. So, fascinating. This nutrient density, and full, and the listener and the player being fulfilled, has to do with like a tight-knit rug. Some are looser, some are more tight-knit. It doesn't mean tight, it means close together, compact, all the different elements rubbing together in a certain way and a certain set of balances created where different overtones will appear. So its bigness doesn't have anything to do with it. It's how nutrient dense that space is filled with how nutrient dense, the nutrient density of that substance, that vibration fills that space. So curious, isn't it? Especially sometimes for brass players when we think in dynamic ranges for expression, instead of just taking something and finding the point. So we're talking about control. We're also f trying to accept <laughs> where each person is. So each person doesn't then think, well, mine is small. It's nice small, but I want it to be bigger. And of course, we can start going into different equipment to try to do that um, with keeping the lip vibration. But I think that in order to expand that and still keep the nutrient density um, is a gradual process. And it's still important, I think, for the teacher not to say, now look, your sound is this way, it needs to be this way. No, I would say. I would say having this nutrient-dense sound is one thing. And now what you fill that nutrient-dense sound with essentially, meaning the nature of the music, is now going to add a whole other aspect. And the listener hearing something that is 
potentized with the essence of the music inside of a nutrient-dense sound is going to light more lights up in the human acoustic than just a nutrient-dense sound because we all know we can fall in love with a sound just like we can fall in love with a body that we think is lovely and wonderful and beautiful and shapely and all this stuff. No matter what your sexual orientation, it's nothing to do with that. But we might realize that inside that cloak, because a sound is a sonic cloak, for what is actually causing that sound. And as a poet of sound, musician, it's important to fill that beautiful sonic substance with meaning. So what is a full sound? Teacher's log. Video 1 for your contemplation.